Verse 12, it continues on. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Remember, most people are not coming down to the tabernacle. They're, they're far off for fear of the judgment of God that has fallen upon 3,000 of their family members, of their kindred, of their nation. And yet God here is reasoning with them. He appoints some that they would stand and minister before him. He accepts Moses and talks with him face to face. I believe Joshua also got a little bit of a blessing for lingering and hanging out a little bit longer in the tabernacle as Moses headed his way back. God has forgiven the people for their sins, for their transgressions, for their idolatry. And now he's ready to bring them back. He's ready to reconcile himself with them. But what does God require? Is it such a hard thing? He lays before them. All I require is that you would fear the Lord thy God. That's all God wants really from his people is a godly reverence and fear for him. And you know what? It's not an awful thing to be fearful of the living God because if you're afraid of God, you don't need to be afraid of anything else. And most of our lives are full of fear of the everything else. Hey, take all of that fear of your health. Take all of that fear of finances. Take all of that fear of the relationships that are falling in this life. Take the fear and dread of serving God that you have down here and just give it all to Him and fear Him instead. And watch as that other things, those other things just fall away and melt away. When you fear God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great and mighty God, suddenly there's no fear in anything else. So what does God require? Just fear me. Just revere me, just love me, just dread me above all things. And it says to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That's what God wants. He wants a heart and soul connection with his people. It continues on in verse 13. It says to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Remember, his commandments and his statutes are not grievous. They're for thy good. They're for your own good. Why do we always look at the commands of God, the Ten Commandments, and the others that fall in, into the Scriptures, and the New Testament statutes and judgments? Why do we look at them as some sort of dread? Ah, oh, you mean I can't drink alcohol? Ah, oh, you mean I can't fornicate? Ah, oh, you mean I, I, I should be chaste until I'm married? Ah, oh, you mean I can't lie, cheat, steal? What is God trying to do to me? Is He trying to ruin all my fun? It's for your good! It's for your good. And this is what God is saying. Fear me above all things. Keep my ways and that is for your own good. You may not think it's for your own good. You know the little child, when you tell them to not play near the street, they don't think that's for their own good. They're, why can't I play here? There's grass over here too. This looks fun. This looks wonderful. My parents are so mean. The four-year-old doesn't understand, but the truth is, is that the adult knows that just on the other side of that is the street, where there is danger, where there is potential death and injury. The adult knows that. The child doesn't know that, but the command comes for the good of the child. And God works the same way in our lives. He gives us these commands. He brought in mercy the Ten Commandments again to lay them before the people for their own good. That's a gracious God. That's a merciful God. God. That's a God that loves you and wants to have a good relationship with you. He wants people to be close. These are light requirements. It is not some heavy thing to follow God. It is a light thing. Even the affliction that you go through, through serving God from your family or from your peers or from your co-workers or from your friends, when they afflict you for serving God, that's a light affliction. That's nothing in compared to what God can do. And that's what God has proved himself to do. He judged his people severely in order to prove a point so that they would come back into his fold and have fellowship with him again. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. 